Uh, for Secretary Stoltenberg, what impact does NATO expect the Wagner events to have on the battlefield in Ukraine? And um, German Minister Pistorius, I was curious to ask, why did Germany change its decision about having permanent troops based in Lithuania? Was this at all tied to the Wagner events over the weekend, or was this in motion already before? Thank you. I think what we have seen in uh, Russia over the last days demonstrates the fragility of the German regime. And of course it is uh, a demonstration of weakness. The uh, when, German regime? When there are... <laughs> sorry? Not the German regime. No, sorry. The Russian... <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, they are quite so, stable so, at the moment. <laughs> Sorry, so uh, we see the, the weakness of the, of the Russian regime and, and it also demonstrates how, uh, how uh, difficult and dangerous it is for uh, President Putin to be reliant on mercenaries. That has actually turned against him. And uh, it also demonstrates that uh, uh, it is hard to predict exactly what will now happen in the next days and weeks. But uh, we should not make the mistakes that we are underestimating uh, the Russians. So uh, we need to continue to provide support to Ukraine. And that's exactly what NATO and NATO allies are doing uh, with um, uh, military support, but also support for the uh, long uh, term. Uh, and um, that's, in a way, uh, what we can say today about the effects uh, on the battlefield uh, in uh, Ukraine. Does NATO need to react in any way on the recent developments in Russia? Uh, President Nauseda, for example, suggested uh, yesterday to strengthen the eastern flank of NATO right now if the Wagner troops uh, will settle in Belarus. Is that an option from your point of view, or are there any consequences for the NATO-Russia Founding Act? Um, and my second question to you would be, um, what message uh, goes out from the permanent deployment of the German Brigade that was announced by Minister Pistorius today? What message goes out to uh, Mr. Putin and Mr. Lukashenko from that deployment? Um, and uh, Mr. Nauseda, a question on the Brigade 2. Um, uh, the, uh, the condition is that Lithuania um, builds the infrastructure for the Brigade. Um, by when will that be finished? Let me start by saying that we, uh, of course, uh, very much welcome the German leadership, uh, which has been uh, demonstrated uh, uh, throughout actually a long time, but it's uh, very much uh, uh, enhanced by the German uh, announcement uh, today, uh, because uh, a German-led battle group, but also more German uh, troops uh, deployed here, uh, shows a strong German commitment to our collective defense, uh, to our shared security, and it's part of uh, the adaptation of NATO which has taken place since 2014 uh, with high readiness of forces, but also with more uh, deployments of uh, combat ready NATO troops uh, in the eastern part of the alliance, including uh, the BAT groups, and one of them is the German led BAT group here in Lithuania. So, this demonstrates German leadership, uh, German uh, commitment to our transatlantic bond. And it also demonstrates the value of uh, a multilateral NATO commitment to a country like, uh, like Lit Lithuania. It sends, of course, a message, uh, our presence here, and also the exercise we just uh, watched, of a NATO readiness and NATO capability to defend every inch of uh, NATO territory. And the reason we do that is, of course, not to provoke a conflict, but it is to prevent the conflict, because credible deterrence uh, is about preventing uh, war, it's about preventing conflict, it's about preventing an attack and preserving uh, peace. And this is not only about forward presence, which is important, but it's also about uh, um, uh, pre-positioned equipment supplies, uh, high readiness and exercises. So it's all of this together, uh, backed also by significant air and naval uh, power. And that also fits into the issue of air defense. I think, uh, of course, land-based air defense systems are important, but we have to understand that uh, when we now have uh, this rotational model in place for air defense, uh, where, which can make it easier for us to switch from air policing to air defense, air forces is also part of air defense, and naval forces can also uh, provide uh, significant air defense capabilities on very short uh, notice. So uh, uh, this is uh, the German announcement. Is, um, is welcomed and, uh, and, uh, and it's part of a pattern, a big adaptation of NATO 
that have taken place over several uh, years. One more thing about this is that we will also make important decisions at the uh, uh, Vilnius in Summit uh, on, uh, on uh, the new force structure, the new uh, force model, and also uh, uh, with plans that will dedicate specific forces to protect specific territories. This is the first time since actually the Cold War where, where we are going to have uh, plans uh, linked to specific forces to protect specific uh, territories. Uh, then the first question was on... Um, yeah, well, so first of all, I think it's a bit uh, early to say exactly, uh, because uh, uh, things may still uh, evolve. Uh, second, we are, of course, monitoring very closely, and, uh, and we are able to react quickly if there is a need. At the same time, I think it is important uh, to remind uh, you all.